First look at high school football scores and highlights. This is First Down Friday Night. Sponsored by your community health mart pharmacy, Whataburger, and B2 EDI. And so it begins a brand new season of First Down Friday Night. Mo Carter and Naomi Gray here, and we're ready to bring you some great action from the gridiron. That is right. For some teams, this is their first week of the season, but for others, it's week zero. We're just calling it kickoff week here at WZDX. We've got a lot of games for you tonight, and you can check out all the scores on our scrolling ticker down below. Absolutely. We'll kick things off on First Down Friday Night with perhaps one of the biggest games in the entire state. Kelvis White, he's spent eight seasons as a head coach down in Dothan before coming up here to make Jemison and now Bob Jones. Tonight he led the Patriots into action against Dothan in the ASSA kickoff classic. Tonight's game being held down in Montgomery at Crampton Bowl. There's Kelvis White in his second year with the Patriots. All right, everyone. Patriots marching down the field on their very first drive. It's Terrence Salter taking the handoff up the gut and he goes 40 yards before he's taken down deep inside of Dothan territory. However, their stall would drive Naomi, so you got to love the kickers here. Here comes Joseph Wheat. He comes through and knocks in the short uh, field goal right there that puts Bob Jones up three to nothing. But back comes Dothan, man, and look, they've got some playmakers. Their quarterback throws across the middle to Raymond Blackman, and watch him make a house call right here for a touchdown. Wolves take the lead of seven to three. More from Dothan. Cunyon Moore is their quarterback. He has all the time in the world. Great blocking schemes. He finds a wide open Kavion Dury. He takes it to the house from 65 yards. Dothan would score again. They're up 21 to 3. Now, later in the second quarter, Naomi, we had a lightning delay, so both teams had to leave the field. Well, Bob Jones comes out energized once they return back to the field, and Rayshon Hardy scores his touchdown right here. He makes it 21 to 10. This game is actually still in progress as we speak everyone let's give you an update from Montgomery right now Dothan leads 28 to 17 in the early part of the third quarter as I mentioned this game was in a lightning delay earlier we're going to give you an update on this game later on on first down Friday night now let's continue on everyone off to Randolph the Raiders playing host to Elkmont in their opener Raiders up seven to nothing and looking for more third and long Andrew Hunter running that read option and watch what happens when you follow your blocks Naomi you find touchdown so that's six points for number four right there he makes it 14 to nothing Red Devils on offense and look you know I love offense but I was a defensive guy so I love great defensive plays as Roe Allen is intercepted by Daniel Martin and the Raiders take over with solid field position. Now let's go to the second quarter. Randolph on their own 39-yard line, and they get it to Nick Strong. And look, this is just one heck of a play. Matter of fact, why don't you give me your thoughts on this play as he goes to the left and he comes back to the right, Naomi? Oh, that guy is mean. He knows how to read the field, and he knows exactly where he's going. You can tell he's been in the weight room as well, because look as he ran over two men, and then he's just going to outrun everyone. 61 yards for a score. Let's check out your final score tonight from Garth as Randolph goes on to win by final score of 48 to 7. Next week, Randolph, they will take on Glencoe. Elkmont, as they'll be up against their county rival, Ardmore. And moments ago, we saw Kelvis White lead Bob Jones into action over in Harvest. His brother, Laren White, was doing the same with Sparkman. Last season, he led the Senators to a 6-5 record and a playoff appearance. Tonight, they took on Gardendale. Last year, the Rockets beat the Senators 22-7 and they didn't miss a beat. First quarter, Rockets up two, and they get amazing field position on this return by LT Sanders. He breaks down to left field, but he's taking down to set up the first down. Next play, it'll get tricky. I'll even eventually find Tyler Nelson, who's getting barricaded by a swarm of linemen, but he winds up chucking the deuces and makes his way into the end zone. Sparkman's defense literally wind up having to step up because it was a 9-0 lead by then. Later, Kenneth Hall, he goes down low, and he meets Jonathan Harris with an aggressive stop for no game on the play. But as time winds down, Gardendale strikes again. Tyler Nelson puts the team on his back with the carry, and he has a reservation for one in the end zone. Rockets jump ahead to a 16-0 lead. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the score right now. Actually, it's 28-20 in the fourth. So Sparkman came back. Surprisingly, Sparkman will face a really tough challenge as they go ahead and, excuse me, as they challenge to go ahead and take on state champion Thomason. 
Now, off to Discovery Middle School, the Falcons of St. John Paul hosting Jacksonville, who was already up 20 to nothing by time I got to the game, but here's a little bit of the action. Third quarter, Colin Hines takes the high snap and is under heavy pressure. There you see Jackson Bonner drilling him down at his credit. The snap, he has some cute little moves there to show for it. Later, Jacksonville is back on offense. Jim Oldie takes some time to create the field, but Joseph Pritigan checks off the first down before the tackle. Later, Olji feeling the pressure as the Falcons secondary locks the whole field down. Andrew Marka breaks up the pass and avoids what would be a crucial first down. Falcons have another shot, but Colin Hines rolls left and dishes out to Angelo Hunter, but he's stopped right in his tracks by an aggressive Jacksonville defense. Falcons couldn't get back in this one. Here's the final score, 41 to nothing. Next week, they're going to go on take the St. John Paul is going to travel to Hayville. All right, let's come back closer to home. Let's go to Milton Frank, Lee taking on Columbia in the ETV game of the week. Columbia, they got the ball first, and they're trying to move the ball down the field. William Stanfield rolling out, and he fires a pass. However, he is intercepted by Jordan Bell, and Bell's got reservations for the end zone. He's a recipient of a pick six. Right there, everybody, and next thing you know, Lee is already up six to nothing because they missed the extra point. Next Lee possession, it's Jerome Jackson getting the handoff barrels his way across the goal line for a score. Lee gets the extra point this time. They're now up 13 to zero. Let's move forward to the second quarter. Lee quarterback LaShawn Van, he's leading the team down the field. They're in the red zone. He will throw the quick out to uh, guess who? That once again is Mr. Jordan Bell. He gets a touchdown on defense, a touchdown on offense right here, and he just continues to put Lee out in front. Let's check out your final score from Milton Frank Stadium tonight. It was all Lee. They knock off Columbia by a final score of 54 to 0. Coming up next Thursday, Columbia will play host to New Hope, while Lee will take on Grissom. Now, of course, the WZDX Sports team is on social media. You can follow me, Mo Carter, WZDX. You can follow her, at Naomi, WZDX. And don't forget about Jonah, at Jonah, WZDX. Hey, send us a tweet. We may read it out on the air later on within the show. And we're just getting started with the debut episode of First Down Friday Night. Up next, we're at Across the River for the varsity game of the night. Stay tuned. Now, back to the action on First Down Friday night. All right, welcome back, everyone. Tonight, we get a full course of a host of games and jamborees from across the area. And Jonah Carp got a chance to check an inter-county rivalry that dates back to the 1960s. He joins us live from the city of Decatur with more. Well, the rivalry is old, guys, but for Austin, they have a very young team. And the big question tonight, how much does not holding a preseason scrimmage hurt the development of young and inexperienced talent? And Austin had a chance to at least try and answer that question tonight against Hartzell. The Black Bears, hyped, smoke and everything, sprinting out of the gate, pumped to finally get some action in. But so are the Hawks. Moving the ball early, John Blackwood finds Eli Tidwell in stride. Motoring up the sideline, he picks up a chunk. The Austin defense didn't have too many blips in that first quarter. They held Hartzell to a field goal on that drive. Three zip was the score after the first 12 minutes, but the skies darkened and the Hawks offense lit up. Hand off to Armadeo Dunnigan. No space in that cluster on the right side. Ooh, here's some daylight. First touchdown puts Hartzell up by two scores and they weren't done. Later in that quarter, Blackwell off the play action survey. Survey says, Rainbow, and look who it is, Dunnigan. He can catch the ball too. The Hawks with a three possession lead midway through the second quarter, and this was the capper. Under a minute to play before halftime, Hartzell has the ball again, and look at this. Design QB run, Blackwood spins into a wall of defenders, no whistle, Blackwood still trucking forward, teammates pushing, pushing, and in. Incredible. Hawks were pitching a shutout in that first half, up 23-0 and that was more than enough. A rough first night for the Black Bears. Austin falls at home to Hartzell, 29 nothing. Well, it wasn't pretty tonight for the Black Bears. They have a chance to pick up that first W next week in their matchup against Decatur. Meanwhile, Hartzell will face May Jameson. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Jonah. Hope you had fun out there across the river. Now, week zero getting underway actually last night with a slew of games across the area code. That is right. Several games took place on the Highway 72 West Corridor near the Shoals. 
and Coach Brad Black and the Brooks Lions open season action with the home matchup against friendly foe Colbert County. Now, Brooks drew first blood for a 6-0 lead in the second, but the Tigers answer back as Nader and Hampton finds a way to stay on his feet, bringing the whole squad with him into the end zone, and things are all tied up. Later, Colbert County with a chance to take the lead, and the PAT is good. Tigers take a 7-6 lead to the locker room, but after some halftime entertainment, Brooks pops out with a vengeance. Junior quarterback Tyler Murphy rolls left and turns the Jets down the sidelines, weaving out the defenders. He almost loses the ball, but maintains possession and calls his own number on the 48-yard touchdown. Lions are back in front, and they'll go for the two-point conversion, and hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Merck's on the keeper, and the Lions add two for a 14-7 lead. Colbert County struggles with field position, and later, it's going to cost them. Check this out as Austin gets chased down in the end zone. Lions defense wouldn't let up, and it's a safety. That'll be just enough to hand Brooks its first win on the season. Let's take a look at the final score. All right, Colbert County fell 16-7 of Brooks next week. Brooks travels to Sheffield. Colbert County takes on R.A. Hubbard. And Merck's had some good moves on that sloppy field. It was. It was a wet one down the road at Lauderdale County hosting rival Lexington Reynard Shine first quarter. There's Jackson Lovelace. He gets bullied behind the line of scrimmage. He takes the sack for a loss. Looks like that one hurt a bit, but They'll get redemption a few possessions later. Jalen Bird takes a snap and finds a hole down the middle. He'll bust out the spin cycle and stamp a nice spot for the first down. It'll take a bit more than rain to stop the crowd from being fired up. But now it's go time. Ensuing play, Lauderdale goes wildcat. Ethan Ham has his eyes on the end zone and he finds the receiver. I barely did. Brody Lance from six. First and only touchdown the game has Lauderdale County its first win on the season. Now here is your final score. Six, nothing, Lauderdale County. Not much change. Next week, Lexington will take on Tanner. Lauderdale County will face Wilson. Looks like you had fun down there in the rain last night. Not at all. <laughs> all right, Chip English making the coach's debut with the Alberville Aggies. They travel to Marshall County rival a -Rab. Down to Marshall County we go. Knights on the road, 13 Play 75 yards capped off by James Ed Johnson with the TD run. The Knights up 7 to nothing as Coach Chip English telling his guys, look, calm down just a little bit, we'll be A-OK. -okay. Well, his quarterback, Andy Howard, connects with his receiver on a short game, but John Weston Johnson comes through with a very big hit. The Aggies are forced to punt. Let's go to the second quarter now as the a raf through the second continues to get hype. And you're going to get hype for things like this. It's Johnson running the read option, calling his own number, shakes a couple of defenders, and he is is gone 73 yards for a touchdown right there it was all a rab last night let's check out your final scores a rab goes on to win by a final of 35 to nothing next week alberville they've got a bye while a rab will take on gunnersville we've got more first down friday night coming up after the break stay tuned Now, more scores and highlights from across the valley on First Down Friday Night. Welcome back. The partnership between the WZDX sports team and Pro Football Hall of Famer Walter Jones is rolling on for another season. Once again, we will honor a deserving student athlete with the B2EDI Walter Jones Offensive Lineman of the Week Award. The deserving candidates will be offensive linemen who are great guys on and off the field. We spoke to Jones about the opportunity. I pick those guys up because a lot of times we don't get recognized. So I'm always trying to help a kid. That might be that extra push that he need that might get uh, a D1 scholarship or a coach might look at him. So for me personally, I just try to represent the best to ever do it and let them know that every time you step off the field or step on the field, you got to be the best version of yourself. All right, down I-65, we go to Coleman. The Bearcats playing host to Grissom. Coleman led 10 to nothing at the break. Grissom in the red zone. The quarterback threw to the end zone, but is intercepted by Dylan Sessions. Talk about an opportunity to take away momentum, and Coleman did just that. Fourth quarter, Coleman looking for some breathing room. Ryan Skinner will plunge forward for a Bearcats touchdown. They're now on top, 17 to nothing. Now in the fourth quarter, Bearcats will pull away. Look, they run the option, but they can throw the ball a little bit, Naomi, as you see right here. Skinner rolls out, connects with Jake Doolin for another touchdown. Let's check out your final score from down I-65 from last night. 
Coleman goes on to win by a final of 23 to nothing. On next week, Coleman will take on Jasper, while Grissom will take on inner city foe Lee. Speaking of Gunnersville, Coach Lance Reese and the Wildcats travel to Montgomery to face defending state champ Hanley in the kickoff classic. Hanley got out early in the red zone. Cannon Hiles rolls out and connects with Jordan West. Mr. West heads south to the end zone for a score. Hanley goes up 7-0. Now more from Hanley with the full house backfield. Cows hands it off to Montavious Meadows and the deuce is in for six. 14-0 Hanley, later it's 21-0 Hanley. And things get worse for Guntersville. Logan Pete is stripped by Gregory Joyner and the big man takes it all the way back for a score. Gotta love That's those the big man touchdowns. Yep, look at us, both excited. <laughs> type of things we like to see. Hanley goes on to win by a final of 55-21. What a blowout. Next week, Guntersville will take on Arab. All right, everyone, we're going to wrap up the show when we return on First Down Friday night. Now, back to the action on First Down Friday night. of the show. We got two more games, Naomi. First one up is yours. Yes, Madison County made the quick trip to Buckland tonight. Strange start to this game. On Madison County's second possession, check out this later, how QB Romero Towers shows his running ability and gets the offense moving into Buckhorn territory. Though on the next snap, there's a bad exchange. Ends up in a fumble. Buckarn Williams, Connor recovers it. And maybe it was the full moon playing with gravity, but on the next play, check out how CJ Catcher has the exact same problem. Excuse me, Hatcher. This time, the Tigers recover. What a series of events. I mean, back-to-back -back fumbles. Love to see it. After a good defensive stand by the Bucks, their special team unit block the field goal attempt by Madison County and Tavian Moore rubbles down the field taking it to the Tigers one yard line and listen it only takes a play for Derek Thompson the second to bulldog his way into the end zone check this out just muscling his way knocking down everybody but six points on the board and later the extra point is going to be good all right Let's get an update on this because we don't have a final on this one yet. We do not. Right now it's 14-7, so I guess you can say any man's game as long as there's some time left to play. Absolutely. On next week, Madison County, they'll take on Boaz, and Buckhorn will take on Bob Jones. All right, final game of the night. It was actually a pretty good one out there in Fort Payne. They were taking on Athens, and one team's wearing black and gold, the other team's wearing white and gold, but they have the same color scheme as you see. Darryl Prather takes it up the gut for a touchdown for Fort Payne. He puts them up 23 to seven, but back comes Athens. It's Jaden Jew, their quarterback. Look at the wheels on this guy, Naomi. Nobody touches this guy as he goes 50 plus yards for a score. Uh, Fort Payne, they were still on top. 23 to 14. Then later on, Jew showing his arm strength all the time in the world, and he throws the pass down the sideline, and he's got a man in stride for an 80-yard touchdown right here. And uh, next thing you know, it is still Fort Payne was up 33 to 27 at the half. In the fourth quarter, Athens was only down 40 to 34, and it's Jude fighting Caden Dumas for another touchdown. Athens now leads. 41 to 40. What is wow. going on in this game? Now, Fort Payne has one of the best kickers in the nation. Alex McPherson comes on a tip of 50-yard kick. 
and it sails wide right. No good on this one. Let's check out your final score from Fort Payne tonight as Athens comes all the way back to beat Fort Payne by a final of 41 to 40. What a game between these two teams that rock the same colors of black and gold. Good luck to them this upcoming year. We got some other score updates to let you know about. Remember, this game was in the lightning delay. Right now, Dothan, they lead 42 to 24 over Bob Jones. Remember, Bob Jones will take on Buckhorn next week. And we got a final from one of your games, too. Oh, yes, we do. Finally, Gardendale takes the W 34 and 20. I could have saw this one coming, but shout out to Sparkman for getting back in the game. Absolutely, everyone. We want to thank you for joining us here on uh, WZDX First Down Friday night for the whole crew. Have a great night. We'll see you next Friday. You've been watching First Down Friday night, sponsored by your community health mart pharmacy, Whataburger, and B2EDI.